Hello, congregation, family and friends. I pray all is well with you. Thank you for joining me for this uh, latest edition of Bible Talk. You'll notice that I put a question up for it tonight. And the question I'm asking is, what is the price to follow Christ? There's always a price to pay when we follow Christ. It's not always a bad thing, but to have Christ preeminent in our life, we need to move other things out of our life. What I want to show you tonight is a couple of passages, actually, that I want us to see what happened when Jesus recruited his first apostles. So the first place we're going to go tonight is in Matthew chapter 4. And what I want to do is read this passage. It's a short passage, Matthew chapter 4. And then I want to show you a different passage that adds a little more light on it, and then we can talk about it. Because there is a price to follow Christ. We read in Matthew chapter 4, beginning in verse 18. It says, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets. And he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father, and followed him. When we read of this account in the book of Mark, Mark chapter 1, it essentially says the same thing, the same account. But when we get over to the book of Luke, you follow with me over to Luke chapter 5. Luke gives us a lot more description as to actually what happened in the scene. So I want to read both passages so that we have everything in front of us, and then we can talk about the price of following Christ. When we go to Luke chapter 5, and we start, it's 1 through 11, so it's a long passage, but bear with me. Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them, and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish and their net broke. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and they filled both ships so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' feet, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of the fish which they had taken. And so also was James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said, Simon, fear not, for henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. So there's the two accounts. If we look at them together, we can get a really complete picture of what happened when Jesus was recruiting the first disciples. So I want to bring in the New American Standard also in certain verses. So I'm, I'm getting that set up right now so that we can look at this together. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> you took your nap. Okay. Sister Angelina, I'm glad you're here. I'm really glad you're here. Let's look at this. I, I want to go back to the Matthew passage for a minute. Matthew 4, verses 18 through 20. Now, I don't know about your experience. I can share with some of mine what happened in my life. But when the decision was made, when we decided to follow Christ, there it always comes with a price. And, and, and sometimes it's more of a price for one person than it is for another. But if we're going to put Jesus first in our life, as he should be, if he is truly our Lord and Savior, as he should be, then we need to give up something else 
in order to put Jesus in its place. In other words, Jesus is not an afterthought. We can't just add him on as an addendum to our life. Jesus has to be preeminent in our life. And so to make room for that, something else has to move down the list or get bumped off the list altogether if you follow what I'm saying. So I want you to see, first of all, in Matthew, what happened here. Let's go back in Matthew 4. And we will see what happened. It says, Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother. They were casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Okay, There were four people that worked together. It was, of course, Peter and Andrew and James and John. They were all working together, as we saw from the Luke passage. They were partners in this fishing business. And isn't it interesting that of the first four disciples that Jesus selected, three of them became his inner circle, Peter, James, and John. Just an interesting side note. So we see that they are casting out their net. He says to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And straight away they left their nets and followed him. So the first thing I want us to see here, they had a livelihood. They had a business. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Now, it's it, it's interesting. We know why Jesus did that. See, Peter and his partners were fishermen. And so the easiest way to, to uh, get their attention, to put it in some kind of terms that they would understand, instead of they were going to fish for fish, they were going to be fishing for men. I don't know if they understood the full impact of that statement at the moment he said that. But look what they did. In verse... 20, it says, and straight away they left their nets and followed him. Straight away or immediately, right away. Do you understand the, the implication of what happened here? They left their business and they followed him. They left their business. They left their nets behind. They left the boats behind and they went and followed Jesus. Sometimes the price that we pay to follow Christ is sometimes he will take us out of a profession that we were working in. I'll give you an example. Um, not long ago, a eh, couple years, I say not long ago, a couple years, I left a profession that I was in for over 40 years. And I didn't know it was coming to an end, but God knew. In order for me to go back to school, and get some additional education and get an additional certification. I needed to stop this profession that I was in because it took so much time. And so God, in his wisdom, he simplified my schedule. He took something out of my life that frankly, I didn't know if I would ever could ever live without. I was in a profession. I was happy. I was making money. I was making people happy. It was the music business. But God had something else for me to do, and he needed to take that out of the way so that I would follow him even more fully, more obediently. And that's exactly what happened. This is what I believe happened with Peter and his brothers. Look, look, look at this. Verse 20, they straight away left their nets and followed him. There was no hesitation. It says straight away, immediately, they dropped what they were doing and they left. Then in verse 21, it says, And going on from thence, or going on from there, he saw two other brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father. This is important. They were mending their nets. And he, Jesus, called them. Now watch their reaction. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Now, the Bible is taking it a step further. You see, Peter and Andrew dropped their nets and they followed Jesus. James and John not only dropped their nets, but it says they left their nets and their father. Did you catch that? And their father. Sometimes the price we have to pay for following Christ is leaving family behind. Didn't Jesus say in the Gospels that he came to divide families? I can tell you in my family, we are divided. There are some believers in the family and there are others who are not believers at all. 
The family has been divided. And sometimes the price that you pay for following Christ, because we must follow Christ first, he must be a priority in our life. And sometimes the price to pay is losing family, losing family members. So we see just in this example here, before we move on to the Luke passage, we see right here that two of these men, all four of them actually, left their profession they went to do something else. They became apostles. And then, of course, as we read through the Bible, they each had their own assignments to do. They each had their own things to do. God had other plans for them. Now, imagine if these men had said, no, thank you, Jesus. We're, we're good fishing. We're, we're okay. We don't want to follow you. Imagine. But no, the Bible says they immediately dropped their nets and they followed him. The two brothers, James and John, say goodbye to their father, Zebedee. They left him back in the boat at the fishing dock, and they followed Jesus. So as we're thinking about this, and you're thinking about your own walk with Christ, what's the price you've paid for it? Have you lost a profession? Has God moved you from one area, one profession to another? Have you lost family members? over it? Have you had to leave family behind because of the call? When the call of God comes in, when the call of Jesus comes in, when he calls us, we must be obedient to his call. We must be obedient to his call. Jesus has to be first in our life. And so I, I, I admire these men as we're looking at this passage. I admire them that they were just to just go off with this trust and this belief that Christ was going to be leading them in whatever way they were going. He, they were prepared to follow Jesus. Amazing. That's faith. That's faith. Imagine leaving a business. Imagine if Jesus came to you today and he said, I want you to follow me. But that involves giving up your business. And you need to trust me as we're moving forward. Or I need to, to separate you from your family because I have need of you. Because I want to do something in your life. Are you that brave? Hi, Loretta. Welcome. Let us move to the, to the Luke chapter 5. I'm going to move over to the New American Standard here. Because as we read earlier, there's more detail here. Now that we've looked at the Matthew account, and as I said, the uh, Mark 1 account is very similar to Matthew. When we get to Luke 5, all right, the sequence is a little bit different. But Jesus does an extra miracle here that, we, that Matthew and Mark did not record. And I wonder if when we read it before, you caught that. We're going to go through it again. Okay, in verse 2 of Luke 5, it says, Jesus saw two boats at the edge of the lake, but the fishermen had gotten out and were washing their nets. Now, we saw that in Matthew. And he got into one of the boats. This is what Matthew didn't record, which was Simon's boat. And he asked him to put out a little way from the land. And he sat and he began teaching the people from the boat. So you can imagine the situation. Christ is out here on the water in Peter's boat. And the people were on the land, and he was preaching, and he was teaching to them. Okay? When he had finished, verse 4 says, He said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a, for a catch. Go ahead and do that. This was a test of Peter's faith. But look what he says in verse 5. He says, Simon answered and said, Master, we worked hard all night and caught nothing. But I will do as you say and let down the nets. That was a, that was a step of faith in Peter's life. They had worked all night long. And if you're a fisherman, you know it's easier to catch fish in the at night. They come to the surface. And, so they spent a whole night and caught zero, nothing. They caught nothing, which I'm sure was unusual for them. These were experienced fishermen. I'm sure they were distraught. They were upset. They were disappointed. And so when Jesus says, look, cast your net out into the deep, and Peter's saying, well, you know, we worked hard all night and we caught absolutely nothing. However, I will do what you say and I'll let down the nets. Verse 6, when they had done this, they enclosed a great quantity of fish and their nets began to break. Look at that. They went from zero to overflowing. They went from no fish to so many fish, their nets were breaking. Verse 7, so they signaled to their partners in the other boat for them to come and help them. And they came and they filled both of the boats so that they began to sink. 
there we have to look beyond just what we're seeing here as far as a story about being fishers of men remember when we were a few minutes ago we were talking about the matthew passage and when he said i will make you fishers of men if you follow me he was using that analogy because they were fishermen and they understood what being a fisherman was all about. But this time, Jesus was, was going to train them and teach them not to be fishermen of fish, but to be fishers of men, for souls, for people, for the kingdom. He had important work for them to do, and they dropped their nets, and they followed him immediately. And sometimes that is the price we have to pay to follow Christ. We have to drop what we're doing and follow him and trust him. But now, in this picture here in Luke, something a little different is happening. They caught zero fish overnight. This was their livelihood. This is how they made money. And all of a sudden, because Christ gave them one command, put your nets in, there were so many fish suddenly in the nets. This was a miracle. It was a supernatural miracle that when they brought it up into both ships, the ship started to sink. Now, there's a bigger spiritual picture here that I want to leave with you. Yes, this happened physically. Yes, Christ supplied all of their needs because they had more fish than they probably had ever caught before, which means they would gain more money for it and so on. Here's the bigger picture that we don't want to miss, the spiritual picture of it, okay? We can do nothing without Christ. That's the bigger picture. When they were out there on their own all night long, they caught zero fish, nothing. They caught nothing. But as soon as Christ was in their lives, as soon as they yielded to his will, as soon as he was obedient to Christ's command, guess what? He had fish aplenty. He had so much fish, the boats were starting to sink. We cannot do what Jesus has called us to do without him. We can't go out and, and, and follow Follow the call of God on our life if he's not the center of our life. Jesus needs to be first in our life. He's above spouses. He's above children. He's above family members. He's above our jobs. He's above everything. If Jesus is not first in your life, this is something you need to consider tonight. Where is he on the list in your life? Where is he? Is he first or is he third or fourth? Does he even rank in your life? He needs to be first. Jesus needs to be the preeminent force. Look, if he is your Lord and Savior, he saved you from an eternity in hell. That automatically makes him number one. What we see here from Peter, and I want you to see this, this spiritual picture. We can do nothing. We cannot witness to anyone without Christ. Because it would be insincere. Look, if we're not saved, if Christ is not your Lord and Savior, what's your motivation to go out and preach about him? It, there isn't any. You wouldn't be interested in the Bible. You wouldn't be interested in preaching to anyone because you're not a believer yourself. So only when Christ is present in our life can we then go out. And so that's what we're seeing here. So let's move on in verse 8. But when Simon Peter saw that, he fell down at Jesus' feet saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For amazement had seized him and all of his companions because of the catch of fish which they had taken. Peter realized he was in the middle of greatness. He was in the middle of something special. Being an experienced fisherman, he had never seen anything like this before. And he's saying, Lord, I, I, I am a sinful man. I don't even belong in your presence. Please go away. But that's not what Jesus had in mind. Jesus came to save sinners, the Bible says. Jesus came to redeem those that were sick. Those that were sick with sin. And Peter was one of them. And we actually see as we read through the Gospels that Peter was quite... Um, rambunctious, I suppose. He put his foot in his mouth quite a lot. Peter was a piece of work. And Peter didn't really mature until like the book of uh, Acts. That's for sure. Yes, an abundance of spiritual food from Jesus to Peter. Yes, that's a good point, Angeline. Verse 10 of Luke 5 says this, And so also were James and John, son of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not fear. From now on, you will be catching men. When they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. That's what we talked about earlier. If Jesus called you, now let's be honest. If Jesus called you to leave your 
job. And I'm not saying all of us get that call. Do not get me wrong. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But if Jesus called you to leave a profession or a job that you're working, do you trust him enough to do that? If he said you need to separate from your family because I'm calling you for something else, is that a price you're willing to pay to follow Christ? What is the price in your life that you have either paid, you are paying, or you're going to pay to follow Christ? As I told you earlier, I lost a profession. I moved. I, I lost a marriage. I lost... And I, I'm not, I'm just being honest with you. I'm not bragging. I lost just about everything. Just about everything. Almost every material thing I ever had. I basically had to start over again. And you know what? That's when I got close to God. That's when I knew that I was willing to pay whatever price he asked of me. If he wanted me to move, I moved. He wanted me to leave a profession, I left it. The marriage fizzled out. That was, that was his will. No sense in going into that. But, I landed on my feet and I landed on my knees because I finally realized what the cost was involved to follow Christ. What is the price you're willing to pay? And are you willing to pay it? Are you willing to do what Jesus tells you to do? If, if, if he told you and convicted you that you needed to move to a new area, would you do it? If he told you to give up your career for him, would you do it? I am not talking about I am not talking about someone prophesying into your life or someone giving you a a vision that you know I'm talking about God himself Jesus himself the holy spirit directly speaking to you and saying to you so and so this is what I need you to do this is what I want you to do you follow me and I have a job for you to do are you willing to pay that price some people aren't. We read through the Gospels. Remember the rich young ruler where he came to Jesus and, and Jesus said to him, there's one thing you lack. Go and sell everything you have and then come follow me. Well, what does the Bible say? The Bible said that he walked away sad because he had great possessions. His possessions meant more to him than following Jesus. Where are you at right now? Where are you at? That's right. He did, Angeline. He did. Jesus paid the price. So if he could pay the ultimate price, which was hanging on a cross, taking your sins and my sins upon himself, what price are we willing to pay? The Christian walk is not an easy one. Never has been. It's not a cakewalk. Because once you become a Christian, we are immediately in a hostile world. We are immediately among people that will dislike us and hate us and shun us. We are immediately in the minority as soon as we become a Christian. Many of our brothers and sisters around the world at this very moment are being persecuted for their faith. You and I are together here on Facebook Live. Are we being persecuted right now? They're paying a price. What price are we willing to pay? What price are you willing to pay? Are you following Jesus tonight? Are you doing what he asks you to do? And if you're not, that's the time you need to go into prayer with the Lord and seek his will for your life. Seek his will. My life verses, I'll, I'll repeat them because they really do fit in here. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. He will direct your paths. If we're not doing that, if we're not trusting in the Lord, if we're not acknowledging Him in every way, if we're not relying on our own memories and our own minds and our own intellect, if we're not doing all of that, then how does He direct our paths? Jesus came and got these four men. Do you think the day before... Jesus showed up that they were thinking that, wow, tomorrow's our last day on the job because the Messiah is going to come along and take us away. No, they were doing their job. They were doing it right up to the point where Peter said, Lord, we were out there all night. We couldn't get a fish. 
Couldn't get a thing. And now their boats are overflowing with fish because Jesus came into their life. They had abundance. And Jesus said, you follow me and I'm going to make you fishers of men. Because let's face it, yes, it is important that we eat physically. But it's more important that we have our spiritual food. That's the word of God. So I, I, I don't want to belabor this. But I want you to be able to answer the question that I pose tonight for yourself. What is the price for following Christ? And are you willing to pay it? Only you can answer that. And only you and God can have that dialogue together. I pray that this uh, Bible talk has been um, beneficial to you. I, I pray that it's been a help. If it has, please feel free to share this with anyone. Um, it has nothing to do with me. I don't want credit. Don't need credit. I'd rather not be doing these, but this is what God called me to do. I'm not necessarily comfortable on camera, but this is a way to get God's word out. God promised in Isaiah 55, 11, he said his word would not return void. It will reach those people that he intends it to reach. Did it reach you tonight? Were you fed by this Bible talk? Maybe you were convicted. Maybe you need to go and have a conversation with the Lord Jesus and find out what he wants you to do in your life. What price are you willing to pay? Is there, a, is there a point along the line where you'd say, Lord, I'll do this, this, and this, but I'm not doing that. You can't do that. It, you're, it's all or nothing. Jesus is either first in your life and you obey him, or he's not first in your life and other things or people take more importance. But I'll tell you, for me, Jesus is first in my life because then everything else fits into place. I pray that this has been a blessing to you, and please share it if you want. Thanks for joining me tonight. God bless you.